Hi everyone, Haley here with Menlo Coaching. I want to chat a bit about sentence correction, because for many students, sentence correction can represent this very dreaded, cumbersome question type where test takers will spend an immense amount of time trying to flashcard their way through everything they think they might possibly need to know about the English language. But remember, this is a critical thinking test first, which means that after those foundations are set, the challenge often has way more to do with how we think than with what we know. And challenging questions will task us on our ability to leverage the information in front of us and be keen observers of how subtle differences in structure can create a really drastic difference in meaning. Let's take a look at a couple of examples that express what I mean by that. Now, in this first example, a seasoned test taker will probably recognize one of the elements we're being tested on very quickly. This unlike in the non-underlined portion indicates a comparison. And if we get rid of some of this garbage in the middle of the sentence that at this point is just here to distract us, we can see that what we're comparing are severance packages to workers in answer options A and B, the automobile company in answer option C. I don't think so. All three of these answers can be eliminated on the basis of an illogical comparison. Now, here's where things get a little more subtle, because answer options D and E both correct that error of comparison by offering a comparison between severance packages and severance package. So now we're going to have to do a little bit more digging, and along the way we need to ensure that we're considering meaning. And this can often be a challenge or a stopping point for many students, because we've got some pretty serious bias working against us. When we read on a day-to-day -day basis, we read to use context to understand what people are trying to say, even if it isn't precisely what's been grammatically expressed. And that does wonders for us in effectively communicating with one another, but it can actively work against us in the context of the GMAT, because our job isn't to be forgiving on the GMAT, our job is to be scrutinous. Our job is to look at that answer option and go, yeah, I see what you were getting at, but that's not what you said. And answer option E falls victim to exactly that. Because while we can use context to get, to get the gist of what they were trying to say, if we really read to interpret the meaning, this that indicates that we're addressing that they are required to stay until the last day that they are scheduled to collect. Are they scheduled to collect across many different days and they have to stay to the last of those many days to get the whole severance package? That doesn't make any sense. By process of elimination, only answer option D expresses both a comparison that was logical and a meaning that was a logical interpretation of the sentence. Now, let's take a look at one more example that reinforces what we saw here. In this next example, yeah, we're going to get a little bit more technical into the grammar of sentence correction, but not a lot more technical. If we look to our answer options, we can see a pretty clear and obvious initial difference. We are offered differing versus which differed across our answer options toward the end of the underlined portion. And without getting too in the weeds on grammatical terminology, you're, you're never going to have a question ask you whether we're looking at a participial phrase or a relative clause, what type of modifier appears we still need to know how they work. And so we can see here that both of the two modifiers that appear in this underlying portion are meant to refer back and describe the same thing, local times. But with answer option A, we used a relative clause, this which phrase in the first portion and then a participial modifier in the second portion. And that's not gonna work for us. If we have two modifiers that are referring back to the same thing, they need to be of the same form. And answer option C falls victim to exactly the same mistake. Now, answer option B corrects that error, but it presents a new error that should be pretty low-hanging fruit. We can see that we have a difference of singular versus plural nature with this was versus were. And what did we just say we were referring back to? Local times. And local times are plural. So we can get rid of B. And once again, the distinction between our remaining answer options gets a little trickier and there's a pretty convincing nature to our wrong answer. Someone who is over-applying parallelism across the board might be tempted to look at answer option D and go, oh, we have determined an ED phrase and differed an ED phrase. Those are as parallel as parallel gets. It must be answer option D. But determined and differing are still both participial phrases. They can still play the same role in the sentence. So 
let's take a closer look at the meaning that's actually expressed in answer option D. Because our connecting term and here, and the use of this ed phrase differed, which can play the role of a modifier or the role of a verb in the sentence, makes things a little trickier because it seems to imply one of two pretty illogical things. Either that we are using parallel form to refer back to the same thing reached was, so the sun reached and the sun differed from city to city? That doesn't make any sense. Or, worse yet, it's playing the role of a verb in the sentence and referring all the way back to what led to the abolition of local time. So the railroads led to the abolition and differed from city to city and to the establishment of regional times? I don't think so. We can get rid of answer option D, and answer option E, again, by process of elimination, was the only answer that didn't have something fatally flawed with it, even if it isn't the first way you might have chose to frame the sentence. So, when we're looking at sentence correction examples, our job isn't to become absolute experts of the English language and everything that entails. Our job is to think critically, leverage the information in front of us, and ensure we're considering meaning along the way.